Good morning, and thank you for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester, where we inspire, enlighten, and empower you to become your most authentic self. The tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And that's what we want to do today. We want to ignite that spark within each and every one of our listeners, and I believe we're going to do just that. Today we have entrepreneur and author Mashani Allen on the show with us today, and she's going to talk about the ultimate makeover. So let me tell you just a little bit about Miss Allen. She is based out of the beautiful city of Los Angeles, California. She is the golden scribe as the author of Beauty of Holiness, a makeover from the inside out. This collection of inner and outer beauty knowledge challenges women to discover and redefine one's self-image. As a makeup artist, a model, and a fashionista, Mashani's experiences and expertise in the entertainment industry enables her to illuminate both the internal and external issues underlying difficult times of transition and uncertainty. Mashani has been given the opportunity to impart wisdom, affirmation, and strength into many lives. The speaking platform has evolved and expanded most recently into a weekly Periscope teaching where her Mashani Allen delves deeper into the beauty of holiness. She is scope defying her audience, and I love that, with an <laughs> emphasis on inner beauty, character development, and the foundational beauty attributes least often considered in our externally focused lives. She has her bachelor's degree in advertising from the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. She has a master's in Christian counseling from Word Bible College. Ms. Allen has always enjoyed empowering and motivating others. And she is now has the privilege of doing this for audiences all over the United States. Her graduate certificate was earned through instruction and training at Crusaders Ministries in Chicago, Illinois, under the Apostle John Eckerhart, and has been applied at Regency Christian Center in Whittier, California, under Apostle Jason and Pastor Kathy Guerrero, where she is an ordained prophet and founder of the Regency Kingdom Training Program, a platform that utilizes teaching, training, and activation to empower and equip believers of Jesus Christ to fulfill their purpose. So today, like I said, you are in for a treat when we bring you a guest. We bring you a guest, all right? So, Miss Allen, are you there with us? Are you on the line? I am on the line. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Dr. Angela. Well, I know that we have just described to our listeners who who you are and all of your attributes and everything that you have accomplished. But I also like to know who people are on kind of an individual or a more personal side. So in your own words, who is Mashani Allen? <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I would say that I am a kingdom creative. Um, I have creativity in multiple aspects, and I just use every gift, every talent, um, every ability that has been put on the inside of me um, to truly help equip, empower, um, to activate. I think that's the main thing. I'm an activator. I help to activate people in their purpose, their dreams, their passions, um, and their destinies. I just love to see people um, fulfill purpose. That's, and I find creative ways to help them to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love that you said that it's all about purpose, and that is something that we definitely talk about here in that we all have a divine purpose that God has created us for so much more than just watching TV and just mm -hmm. the daily grind of back and forth to work, that there really and truly is a purpose to our lives. 
And I love how you say, you know, we have to do these makeovers and they have to be from the inside out. Yes. So what would you say is the true or a better definition of beauty? Wow, that's an excellent question. I think a better definition of beauty is truly how much you reflect Christ. Um, the more you reflect Christ, the more true beauty um, exudes from the inside of you. And I have to say a reflection of Christ because beauty isn't just something that women should reflect. Beauty mm. is something that men should reflect as well as children. It's not, beauty is not something that's limited by an age or a gender. I love that. It's not just something for women. It's no. not just something for for gender or for age. Wonderful, wonderful. That's right, that we should all have a beautiful spirit inside yeah. and out. So true, so true. Now, how would, how would someone develop their inner self? How do they make sure that that inner beauty, that maybe they've learned to push it down in order to survive in a particular environment or they've been beaten up? Or, you know, we have so many scenarios with the reasons why people don't believe or trust that they have inner beauty anymore. What are some ways that people can develop this inner beauty? Well, the first way is to, first of all, go to the creator. Because, unfortunately, many times our definition of beauty, it can come from, it came from outside sources. Some of those were people who we knew. Some of it was society. Um, there were so many different, or there have been so many different things that have been used to define us. Um, sometimes it has come from family, friends, and leaders, but sometimes that hasn't always been positive. So in order to fully know who you are, you must go to the creator. And that literally is sometimes the last place that we go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes we're pushed there after life has built us, the cars that it's built us. But I really believe it's a journey. It's not something that happens overnight. It's a process that we go through that many times people want to avoid um, because it causes us to have to deal with sometimes the hard truth. But in dealing with that and getting the healing um, that we need and allowing the love of God to fully um, go into those deep places, those hidden places, those dark places, and those forgotten places, it's his love that comes through that begins to beautify, that begins to sculpt, that begins to activate, and then even begins to transform us into his original intent. Many times we live the definition of what people have said, but when we mm-hmm. take this journey, we learn the definition of what he has spoken over us. That is awesome. I love it. I love it. That is so awesome that we, how many times have we forgotten to just go and, 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 re, and remember what God has said about us. That is yeah. so that is so true. That is so beautiful. We do get caught up in the in the world's view of us, which leads me to, to my next question and that's about social media. Now I'm not knocking social media. God bless social media. Um it is a platform that many of us use and it is a wonderful resource. However, social media I believe kind of plays into the belief system of many, and especially of our youth. Um, Are you finding that social media is having an impact on especially what young girls are believing to be true about what beauty is? I believe that media has always played a role larger than it ever should have played on us as individuals. And I think the introduction of social media has taken it to a whole nother level. Um, at first, media was something that wasn't technically tangible to us. We could watch a movie. We could see a commercial. But there wasn't feedback that was given. But now through social media, the minute we post a video, the minute we post a picture, 
not only is it posted, there's feedback that can go along with that. And that feedback can come from people we know. That feedback can come from people we don't know, but it Mm -hmm. still has an impact on us. And I think, sadly, um, because there's a lack of um, value, self-value, self-worth, um, unfortunately, in a lot of people, both old and young, um, sometimes we can turn to social media to try and fill that void and find mm-hmm. that value. And for some of us, it has worked for us, but then for many of us, it has worked against us um, to where we're basing our beauty on how many likes we got on mm-hmm. a Facebook mm-hmm. post or we're basing our our opinion of ourselves by how many hearts we got on an Instagram picture. And right. we have to know our value outside of anything that social media could ever offer us because in actuality that's something that's fickle. And that should never be how we garner or gain or generate a definition. Wonderful. We should never use that as the definition. Yes, that is so true. Well, listeners, we have to take a very short break. But before we do, Lashani, just in case some folks have just now joined us, how can our listeners get in contact with you? Oh, they can easily go to my website, MashaniAllen.com. And I am also on all social media platforms as Mashani Allen. Well, listeners, you heard it right here, MashaniAllen.com. We need to take a very short break. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. Today's special guest is entrepreneur and author, Ms. Mashani Allen. You can find her at MashaniAllen.com. Today we are talking about the ultimate makeover. Now, Mashani, we were just talking about how media and especially social media has made an impact on what we believe to be true about our beauty, and especially for our younger girls. But my question now is going to turn more towards you a little bit personally, and that is how did you discover your identity? How did you figure out who you are as an individual? Wow, that is, that is a great question. Um, I think the best way for me to define or answer that question is to actually share my journey. Now, I was born and raised in the church, so I had an idea of who God is. I knew the word of God, but I, and I knew how to pray, but I wouldn't necessarily say that I knew him as father. Um, so mm-hmm. when I went to college, um, I got a degree, and I started um, a job, and I had a situation happen at that job, which actually brought me back to my knees and caused me to rededicate my life to Christ. And during this time, I was trying to decide because I didn't feel as though me and corporate America were getting along. So mm-hmm. I was either going to be a model or, or, a, or I was going to go to pursue a modeling career or I was going to go to cosmetology school because I've always loved all things beauty. So mm-hmm. a door opened for me to go and work on a movie set, and I felt as though that was the Lord saying, this is the direction that I want you to go. But what was so interesting is I had a parallel going on in my life. I would go to a casting or an audition, and I would have someone say, my skin was too dark or my nose was too big. Now, mm-hmm. I never considered my skin in terms of darkness, and I actually like my nose because it's just like my dad. <laughs> but at the same time, I had, I was developing my relationship with God, and when he would show me things about myself that weren't beautiful to him, I could change those things. The mm-hmm. external factors that people were saying that they had a problem with, I couldn't change that. But mm-hmm. my heart was my choice. So mm-hmm. I began this journey of allowing God to beautify me so, because 
people thought I was beautiful on the outside, but there were some things in my heart that were absolutely ugly. They were dark, um, and they did not reflect him well at all. So I had that parallel journey going on, but I was so blessed in it because it caused me to fully embrace who God was creating to me, me to be and how he saw me. It got to the point where he challenged me to wear no makeup at all. I couldn't even do my eyebrows. <laughs> I couldn't even do my eyebrows. And that was probably one of the most liberating and uh, journeys for me to take because I grew up in Florida, oily skin, so I had blemishes on my face. And I wanted every blemish to be covered because I felt as though they were so huge and everybody could see them. But when I took that challenge of wearing no makeup at all, I began to discover that people didn't see me the way I saw me. And I had to learn to love myself, marks and all. And know that this is who he created me to be, and he didn't make any mistakes with me. And I had to begin to love myself, not in a form of vanity, but to appreciate the who he made me. There is only one me, and he mm-hmm. finds me beautiful, and he finds me lovely. This is before I put on makeup. Everything that I am, he finds lovely. And the more time I spend in his presence, the more time I spend in his word, the more I allow him to cultivate me and to sculpt me, I become a greater reflection of him in the earth. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm so glad that you shared your story because there's someone right now that's being told that they are too fill in the blank, that they don't fit a mold, that uh, they're too tall, too short, too dark, too light, too whatever it is. <laughs> and we get, we get that as women. We get that as African-American women. We yeah. get that as multicultural women. Whatever it is, we're, we're always being told in one way or another that we are too something. Or and, that we're not enough. Right, right. Oh, man, I'm, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I really think that that hit home for someone and it's like they're raising their hand going, yeah, that's me, <laughs> you know? And yeah, I needed to know that I could go on too. And I love that you said that your nose is just fine because that's your dad's nose. <laughs> and it's like, that's right. That's right. That nose is just fine because that is that is who we are. And we have so many people that are of various cultures that there are things that make them who they are, that their eyes are a certain way, their nose or the shape of their face or whatever it is. And if we could only see that as as beautiful yeah. as God sees it, as opposed to um, making us something that we are not, I, I love that. But you know what I'm hearing as as you were speaking is that there is such a passion in your voice, that passion to empower, to enlighten other people. You know where. Where did you where did you find all this passion, or, or why do you think that you should share this passion that that you have? Wow, I think. Well, the interesting thing is after after I became um, after I worked on movie set um, and did did some things in the entertainment industry, I then ended up becoming a makeup artist. And what was so amazing about that was I would be doing people's makeup and ministering to them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I was able to show them features about their face, like during their makeup, that I was able to enhance. But at the same time, I will be able to have a conversation with them and let them know the different things that God wanted to enhance on the inside of them. So I've always been one that God has worked with in parallel. And I was a a young woman who dealt a lot with rejection. And I believe that that's something that every human being deals with, but it affects us all differently. And Mm -hmm. I dealt with rejection strongly. And it wasn't until um, I got healed and delivered from rejection and was fully able to embrace who God created me to be 
after going through that, I understand how deep, how dark, how painful it is to feel rejected. And being that I'm walking in levels of freedom and liberty, I want others to experience that as well because one thing I, I come to understand is when you deal with rejection, the treasure chest that's on the inside of you never becomes, comes alive. Other people are never able to fully embrace and receive the gift that you are because it's hidden and it's encapsulated Mm. with rejection. So because Mm. I was able to get free, I want to see others experience that same level of freedom as well because we're all gifts to be given and to be offered, and without you, something is missing in the world. Yes, we are truly all gifts. I, I love that answer. I, I know that it's it's almost time for us to take a break, but I wanted to ask uh, you one more question, and that is, um, especially having worked in in the industry, uh, what is what is considered the true standard of beauty, or how should we understand this true standard of beauty? Well, honestly, I don't believe there is a true standard of beauty. Um, based on society, because society's definition constantly changes. I think the only way to find the true standard of beauty is in the Word of God. Outside of that, nothing remains constant. Mm-hmm. I, have, I have to agree with you. I really have to agree with you, and especially for, for our young women. Um, they they use magazines, you know, they they look at the magazines, they're on social media, they're on the internet, and they are just bombarded with all of these images and trying to figure out where they fit in and what what is the true standard for them. Um, I grew up in the time where models were, before there was a size zero, um, models were what we would now definitely know to be a size zero, that there was just one way that, um, that beauty was presented to us. And for those, like you were saying, that didn't have a strong sense of self, that, that didn't have a strong sense of self-confidence or self-esteem, probably wrestled with that a lot saying that I don't fit into that mold. And I'm so glad that now you're teaching and sharing and letting others know that there, there is definitely something more out there and that we are okay the way that we are. Yeah, definitely. Well, definitely. Because um, when you look at the Webster's definition of beauty, it actually is more holistic than it is feature-based. But what society presents to us is feature based. Mhm, mhm. And isn't isn't that <laughs> isn't that interesting? Because that's that's really what we're supposed to concentrate on. Scripture tells us, you know, that it is not our our outwardly beauty that that beauty is going to fade, and that we really should be worried about our spirit more mm-hmm. than our outward appearance. It's it's just wonderful that we get these reminders if only we would just kind of open our eyes, if we would just, you know, unplug our ears and yeah. hear all of the wonderful reminders that are around us about who we should be. Now, listeners, don't get us wrong. We're not saying that we, there's anything wrong with putting on lipstick or making sure, you know, that our hair looks good. But that we should <laughs> definitely, you know, work on work on that inner man as well and make sure that we have that inner beauty just as much. I absolutely agree, Um, being a makeup artist, a model. um, The external is important, but that shouldn't be where all the value goes. Unfortunately, I've seen some people spend more time on the outside Mm -hmm. than they do on the inside. And it's the inside that will outshine the outside any day. Any day. That is so true. That is so true. Well, listeners, we need to take a very short break, but don't worry. When we get back, we are going to speak more with Mashani Allen. And Mashani, again, please, if you would let our audience know, where can they find you or what is the best way to contact you? Oh, the best way to contact me is going to my website, MashaniAllen.com, as well as any of the social media platforms I am at Mashani Allen. All righty. Well, listeners, we'll be back right after this.
And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Tester. Today we are speaking with entrepreneur and author Mashani Allen, and we are talking the ultimate makeover. That's right, the ultimate makeover. So this is more than just about skin and hair today. This is about what we can do to make ourselves beautiful on the inside as well as on the outside. Now, Mashani, we were just saying that, you know, society has tried to give us a version of what tr- the true standard of beauty is supposed to be. And we have so many young women, especially that are trying to deal with their bodies and, and, and do they fit into a mold and, and should they be happy with who they are and can they look in the mirror and still love the person that they see. Now, I know that with your program, you talk about a lot of different things and you you touch on the stuff that really hits home for a lot of women. Um, I want to ask you about something that you refer to as true beauty marks. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, I teach what I call spiritual beauty classes. Um, where I literally take women on a journey um, through, the, through the beauty of holiness. And a true beauty mark means it's something that's universal. It represents that it's something that someone in America can have, just as well as someone in India can have, just as well as someone in China can have. It's supposed to be universal. So some true beauty marks, um, and it, another thing is it's non-gender bias. <laughs> <laughs> so some true beauty mark. And when I say it, I can, when, we, when I say it, I can already see some of the audience saying that makes sense. One true beauty mark is joy. When someone is full of joy, you, get, you don't even really pay attention to what they look like because they mm-hmm. have so much joy. And their joy can cause them to be even the more beautiful because they mm-hmm. have so much joy. So joy is something I consider a true beauty mark. Another true beauty mark is grace. Grace is not an attribute that everyone has. It's something mm. that everyone can have. And when you see someone who operates in grace, It's just something that is so beautiful to experience, to see, and it actually causes you to want it as well, just like joy. These beauty marks are marks just like when you see the latest lipstick color. It causes you to want it. When you Mm -hmm. see someone operating in joy, when you see someone operating in grace, it causes you to desire to operate it in in it as well. Um, another true beauty mark is compassion. I'll just share three. <laughs> mm, mm, I have a list, but I'll, I'll share three. But this is something that I teach. I teach the women who take my classes. These are beauty marks. These are things that you want to refine. These are things that you want to be a part of your definition of who you are. This is what you want to exemplify. I love it. I love it. How many times have we not been compassionate? How many Mm. times have we overlooked someone because we were too busy, because we were doing our own thing, because we didn't want to get involved, and all we needed to do was just stop and be compassionate, Um, just one human being to another. I love it. I just love it, love it, love it. And I know there's someone right now going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, ready to sign up, ready to sign up, MashaniAllen.com, MashaniAllen.com, because that was good, that nugget. And those were three. She said there was a list. I, yeah. I heard you. There was a list. So, you know, if, if, if those are the three that she's giving you for free, you can imagine <laughs> what the class is going to be about. And we we have to, and I'm not saying that to try to be funny. I I am saying that because it's true. So many times 
we, we don't understand the value of what someone is really trying to share with us. And, and we hear, you know, I have a class, I have a class, and it seems like everyone has a class. But when someone really gives you nuggets for free, then you know that what you're going to pay for is going to have some meat. It's going to have substance. So, and, that's, and that's what you want. You want to be able to bite your teeth into something that is going to change your life, that is going to improve your way of living. So, you know, I thank you for sharing that. I, I really appreciate that. You're now, welcome. when we come to this new place of identity, how, how does someone know when they need to come to a new place or how do they know when they've arrived at their new place of identity? Well, that's a really good question, and that's something that I discuss in my book, The Beauty of Holiness, The Makeover from the Inside Out. Um, The way I help people um, through their journey of the beauty of holiness is this. As the the cosmetic line that I work for, even though we definitely did the makeup part, what we concentrated on the most was your skin type. And in the natural, there are five skincare categories. You're either dry, oily, combination, sensitive, or normal. But spiritually, you're in one of those categories as well. you spiritually, spiritually mm. oily, spiritually dry, spiritually sensitive, spiritually combination, or spiritually normal. But most mm. people never knew. Some people don't know their natural category. So they're probably really shocked hearing that they fit in one right. of the spiritual categories <laughs> as well. But after I help you to identify both naturally and spiritually which category you're in, I then show you the cleansing regimen that you need both naturally and both spiritually. We have to take care of our natural skin. And we have to take care of our spiritual skin. That's why I call it a journey. It's not a one-time event. It's a lifetime event. But the beautiful thing is, in the natural, whatever skin category you're in, you're unable to change it. But in the spirit, you can. We all start out spiritually oily, but we don't have to stay that way. And what I love about my book is that after I teach you or I show you all of this information and the other factors that play into your skin type, I then take you on a skin journey through the Bible. In the Bible, we never, there are very few people who are described physically, but spiritually, we can Mm -hmm. see where they are. So I put 10 women in the Bible in the spiritual skin care category. So you can learn from their journey. You can see where people change their spiritual skin type and where mm-hmm. others, they kept their spiritual skin type. Oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Because people need to see that it's not just them, but yes. that there, there have been other people. And, exactly. and to see them go from point A to point B and to clear up their, just clear up their spiritual skin. I exactly. love that. I exactly. love that. I love that. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that. That is something that for, for, for my women's ministry, I would, ladies, you guys are going to love this. We have a speaker for you today. Because we need to share that. We need to talk about that. And so many times we, we don't know what our skin type is. Like you said, yeah. in the natural, we don't know what it is. So right. many times a spiritual condition, they, no clue, have absolutely no clue. And to be able to demonstrate it, to give something tangible, I think will enlighten so many people. Now, I know that there, that there are some steps because you say that it's, that it's a journey, and I, I like that, that there, there are no overnight fixes to um, solving the things of one's life. So what are some steps that can be taken to make sure that we, you know, you stay on the right path on this, on this journey? Well, I would, some, some of the steps are, first of all, um, being in the Word. The Word washes. The Word cleanses, the Word exposes, the Word reveals, the Word heals. 
Um, so being in a word, being in the in the word, um, is one step. Um, spending time with God. I have something, and I've I've shared this with those who follow me on Periscope. Um, dad time, and I literally have an alarm on my phone that goes off at a particular time. And Mm -hmm. my friends, my family, they know not to call me at that time Mm -hmm. because I'm spending time with the Father. I'm making an appointment like I would make any other appointment. And that time can be me talking to him. That time can be me just listening to him. That time Mm -hmm. can be me just listening to worship music. But whatever I do with that time, I've made time for him. And that is a step, a crucial step. That, that many of us miss. Now, this doesn't take away from when you worship him while you're driving in your car or when you pray mm-hmm. while you're in motion, but we need to make sure we have time where there's no interruption. If it's mm-hmm. 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever time you can give, that in itself will do so much for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And another step is making sure that you have a community. Um, you have a community of believers that you worship with. You have a church home. Um, it sounds like a basic step, but I'm finding it's a step that a lot of people don't take. Um, because yeah. the word says iron sharpens iron. This is yeah. not a journey that you can be on by yourself. Even in having relationship with him, he says that it's good for us to assemble. So those are three steps that I would share today um, that will help you while you're on your journey. Yeah. Now, the last question for you, and thank you so much for for spending time with us here today. Can you tell us a little bit about, a little snippet about your own journey? Um, I, I, I think I've shared a good amount of it on our first part. But I would say um, as my journey continued, um, Mm -hmm. I really um, began to see the benefit of spending time with God and allowing him to to heal. I think that a lot of times we don't understand the depth of healing that we Mm -hmm. need, especially as women when our identity and our definition is constantly being bombarded every day, it's not a one time only. It's something that Mm -hmm. we are constantly um, fighting. But by allowing him to heal me and realize that, first of all, I'm accepted in the beloved and that Mm -hmm. when he made me, he did not make a mistake. And Mm -hmm. allowing him to define me and allowing him to show me how he sees me and letting that be the definition from which I live, that is what has helped me to become who you hear (laughs) today. Mm -hmm. And that was a process. That was a journey. And learning Mm -hmm. how to cast down the negativity, you know, that people um, would send my way. And I, I journal a lot. So mm-hmm. I've had to go back to my journals of conversations that I've had with him and things that he's spoken to me and remind myself of what he has said. I love about it. About me. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, to remember who we are and to remember whose we are yes. is just so important. It really, it really, really is. Ms. Mashani Allen. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you so much for sharing your journey, your path, your wisdom, and the resources that you have made available to not only just my listeners, but available to everyone. Thank you so much for for living out your purpose and to walking in obedience of that purpose. Thank you so much. Last question, and that is more of a reminder. Where can folks find you because I know someone is saying I missed it where can they find you they can find me at mashaniallen.com my book the beauty of holiness is available on my website as well as barnesandnoble.com and um, amazon.com 
And I'm also available on all social media platforms, Mashani Allen. Thank you so much, listeners, for joining us for another episode of Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. And until next time, remember to let your light shine.